So DeMar DeRozan sat down with ESPN last night in Los Angeles, not a big surprise although I'd rather he'd have sat down with me in Mississauga, and what emerged was what was expected. DeMar is still upset at the way the trade was handled, that he wasn't kept in the loop as a player of his stature in the franchise history would expect to be and, no, he had no desire to be moved at any time. Canadian rapper Drake talks to Eastern Conference All-Star DeMar DeRozan during halftime in the NBA All-Star Game in Toronto in 2016. DeRozan said he spoke to Drake for hours after the blockbuster trade, tied Coral, Toronto star file photo, DeMar DeRozan, left, seen here on the bench in this file photo from a Toronto Raptors game earlier this year against the Portland Trail Blazers, said he talked with his friend Kyle Lowry immediately after learning about the blockbuster trade for Kawhi Leonard, Rick Madanik, Toronto star file photo, this kind of dovetails a bit with what Masai said last week, that a lack of communication, or missed communication, led to some hard feelings that aren't likely to go away anytime soon. Soon. DeRozan's words. Article continued below, I felt like I wasn't treated, with what I sacrificed for nine years, with the respect that I thought I deserved. By just giving me the say-so of letting me know something's going on, or it's a chance, of a trade. That's all I wanted. I'm not saying you don't have to trade me. Just let me know something's going on because I sacrificed everything. Just let me know, you know what I mean. That's all I ask, everybody knows, I'm the most low-maintenance person in the world. Just let me know so that I can prepare myself for whatever my next chapter is and I didn't get that, DeMar DeRozan speaks with ESPN NBA insider Chris Haynes for an exclusive interview after being traded by the Toronto Raptors to the San Antonio Spurs in exchange for Kawhi Leonard. DeRozan discusses his loyalty to the Raptors, love for the city of Toronto, and his thoughts on how Raptors GM Isai Ujiri handled the trade. I have spoken to people close to DeRozan often since the trade happened last Wednesday and not much has changed since his original Instagram outburst in the wee hours of Wednesday night. He feels wronged by an organization he gave his all to for almost a decade and I can't see that changing any time soon. The fans are a different matter, as we saw in his note to them on the weekend but his raw feelings for Masai and the upper management is going to take an awful lot of time to be soothed, if it ever can. He's mad at Ujiri, mad at ownership and while I'm sure he'll eventually feel better, he doesn't yet, as you can see through last night's interview. How that plays out long term for the Raptors in the NBA remains to be seen. DeMar isn't the most vocal of stars and certainly is as low maintenance as he says but he's well respected by just about every player in the league and if he's bad mouthing the Raptors, it's going to carry some weight. How much, I don't know. Players and agents tend to have short memories in instances like this once the dust settles, more contracts have to be offered and more money has to be thrown around. I'm not saying this is a tempest in a teapot because right now it's not. DeRozan is miffed, his many friends around the NBA are going to take his side absolutely in the task now for my sign Bobby Webster is to work to repair damage to Toronto's image. Article continued below the will lay low for weeks, I can't imagine we'll hear publicly from anyone until a week or so before camp starts in September, and that's probably the wisest course of action. So, too, will Kawhi Leonard lay low. It's doubtful he'll be in Vegas for the USAB camp that starts tonight, that in itself is not unusual because he's blown them off in the past and this one is easy to avoid, and I cannot see a scenario where he does any media in Toronto for at least a month, probably longer. I'm pretty glad DeRozan finally spoke and cleared the air a bit and let his anger and disappointment out without truly exploding he presume it was cathartic for him, it's good that he did it before the masses of media descended on the American camp today and nothing he said could remotely be categorized as explosive, doing it, though, was important. And I'm glad he did.